praise to Allah. There is no God but Allah. Allah is great. All power and might belong to Allah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين All praises you to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome dear viewers of Peace TV to another episode from the chosen ahadith of كتاب الأدب المفرد of الإمام البخاري And if you remember in the previous two episodes we've been discussing short biography of the author, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, and also we shed some light upon the book itself, that is the Kitab Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. And inshallah, in this episode, we'll be discussing the first chosen hadith from Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. If you have the book, we're going to go directly to the hadith number 18. And this is a hadith which I've given the title for it, The Nine Counseling. It is... Abu Darda radiallahu anhu arda. He is talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, He has given me the following nine counseling. He said, La tushrik billahi shay'a wa in hurrikta aw kutta'it. Do not associate anything in the worship of Allah, even if you have to be burnt or cut into pieces. The second counseling, Wa la tatrukanna salat al maktubata muta'amida. And do not abandon the prescribed obligatory prayer deliberately. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ بَرِئَتْ مِنْهُ الذِّمَّةِ He who does deliberately abandon the obligatory prayer, then he has no covenant with the Almighty. And then after that, he said, وَلَا تَشْرَبَنَّ الْخَمْرُ فَإِنَّهَا مِفْتَاحُ كُلِّ شَرِ Do not drink, consume wine or alcohol, for verily it is the key for every evil. وَأَطِعْ وَالِدَيْكِ وَإِنْ أَمَرَاكَ أَنْ تَخْرُجَ مِنْ دُنْيَاكَ فَأَخْرُجْ لَهُمَا And obey your parents. And they command you to leave all the possession of your world, that is the possession of your world, then leave it for them. وَلَا تُنَازِعَنَّ وُلَاتَ الْأَمْرِ And do not contend with those people who are in power. وَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ أَنَّكَ أَنْتَ Even if you feel that you are in the right. وَلَا تَفِرَّنَّ مِنَ الزَّحْفِ وَإِنْ هَلَكْتَ وَفَرَّ أَصْحَابُكُ And do not flee from the battle when the army advances, even though that you're going to be killed or your brothers had fled and ran away from you. وَأَنْفِقْ مِنْ طَوْلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكُ And send from what you have onto your family. And وَلَا تَرْفَعْ عَصَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكُ And do not take the stick away from your family. And وَأَقِفْهُمْ فِي اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ and also make them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. Those are the nine counseling that the Prophet ﷺ has given to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu wa arda. It is a collective advice, a collective counseling from the Messenger of Allah, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent him with the mercy, is a mercy gift to mankind, and he is al rauf al-Rahim, the oft forgiving, the oft merciful. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he himself, the Prophet sallam, he had taken from those attributes of Allah. He is with us the most kind, the most merciful. لا تشركن بالله شيء. This is the first counseling. Do not associate anything in the worship of Allah, even if you have to be burnt or cut into pieces. For verily, الشرك شيء عظيم. Shirk is the greatest of all zulm. And it will invalidate your deeds. And not only that, it will rub you off from security. And if I want to talk about shirk, it will take me a lot of episodes. But let's just go and shed some lights about the shirk. First of all, a shirk dhulmun azim. A shirk dhulmun azim, when the ayah in the Quran was revealed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمُ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who had believed in Allah and did not adulterate their belief with dhulm, those are the ones who are going to have the safety and security, and those are the ones who are going to be guided. Now, when this verse was revealed, the companions were worried. Because who's amongst them who does not wrongdo or being injustice to other people? You might wrongdo your father, your mother, yourself, your friend, 
So the ones who believe and did not adulterate their iman with zulm, with injustice. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ الظُّلْمَ الَّذِي تَعْنُونَ It is not the injustice which you think. It is the greatest of all injustice. إِنَّهُ shirk. Don't you hear what Luqman had said to his son? يَا بُنَيْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمُ الْعَظِيمُ Oh dear son, do not associate anything in the worship of Allah. For verily shirk is the greatest of all zulm. It's a great zulm and injustice. Because you're doing justice to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we tell every dear viewer and every person that when he does his ibadah, he has to keep away so much from the shirk. And just to make sure that you understand the word shirk, we need to know that this shirk is of two types. The shirk, which is a major, and the shirk, which is minor. As for the shirk al-asra, the minor shirk, it is yasir al riya That means little riya Not a lot of riya showing off. As for the major shirk, it will not be forgiven. Even Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says even the minor shirk will not be forgiven. But for the major shirk will take you outside the fold of Islam. And the major shirk is whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spoke about. Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma dunna dhalika li man yasha. In surah al-Nisa. Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushraka bih. Allah does not forgive anybody who makes shirk with him. Wa yaghfiru ma dunna dhalika li man yasha. But he forgive which is less than the shirk. And here means the shirk al-akbar. The great shirk. The minor shirk. Remember that this shirk will invalidate all your deeds. Even the Prophet ﷺ was told and been warned about that. He said, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ It was revealed to you, O Muhammad, and to the ones who are before you from the prophets, that if you make shirk, then your amal, your deeds will be invalidated. لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you will be among the losers. Of course, the Prophet of Allah will not commit shirk. But this is just a warning to the Ummah through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't commit shirk. Also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّهُ مَا يَشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ If he makes shirk, then this person, he will be deprived from Jannah. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارُ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And his abode will be the fire. And there will be no helpers for those ظَالِمُونَ Those مُشْرِكُونَ So, عباد الله, slaves of Allah, brothers and sisters, you have to be careful. Shirk for verily, as I said, it comes into many forms. So many people make an oath by other than Allah. This is a minor shirk, but if you meant that whatever you're making an oath with is greater than Allah, then it's a major shirk. So many people, for example, showing off in their ibadah. So when they pray, they're not praying for the sake of Allah. So this was narrated about this Bedouin person. He was actually praying in his prayer, but he was not praying for the sake of Allah. He was praying for the sake of the people. And he was praying fast. Nobody was watching him. As soon as he heard his friends are approaching, he started praying calmly. Allahu Akbar. Uh, just for the sake of his friends. Now his friends were looking at his prayer and he was saying, Masha Allah, what a prayer. Masha Allah, this person is praying almost as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the man, he was listening to what they were saying because he's after their praise anyway. So he forgot about himself and then he looked at them. He said, by the way, I'm fasting today as well. So he forgot himself and he started talking to his friend just to tell them I was fasting as well. So this person, he had invalidated his prayer because he's not seeking the pleasure of Allah alone. Some people put the ta'awiz, the ta'awiz where they say that like amulets for the sake of helping themselves and protecting themselves. If they think this amulet would save them beside Allah Azza wa they are making major shirk. But if they believe that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the nafi', who is the dar, is the one who is beneficent and so on and so forth, but yet they take this as means, then they are making minor shirk. Whether it's major or minor, the person needs to be as far as away from those type of things that will invalidate his deeds. Some people will iyadu billah, they go say, Ya Jilani, help me. Oh Jilani, help me. And so on and so forth. Wal iyadu billah. So, ayyuh al muhad, you are the person who is monotheistic. If you ask help, if you ask help, if you want something, then only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not ask anybody else. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَمَا يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ In Surah Al Hajj, that he who doesn't associate anything in the worship of Allah, he is like he's been dropped from the heavens. فَتَخْطَفُهُ الطَّيْرِ And he will be snatched by the bird. أَوْ تَهُوِ بِهِ الرِّيحُ فِي مَكَانٍ سَحِيقٍ Or the wind will take him to a far off land. Second counseling. وَلَا تَتْرُكَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ الْمَكْتُوبَةَ 
Mutaamida. And do not abandon the prescribed obligatory prayer. Mutaamida. Mutaamida means deliberately. For no reason. Deliberately for no reason. Qal. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ بَرِئَتْ مِنْهُ الذِّمْنَةِ That is the person who leaves and abandons his obligatory prayer, mutaammida, deliberately, then he has no covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this covenant? The covenant that Allah azza wa had taken upon himself for every Muslim who does observe his prayer, that Allah azza wa will put him into paradise. So if you abandon your prayer deliberately, you have broken this and breached this covenant. And you have actually let yourself down, and Allah will let you down. And the Prophet emphasizes this fact. He says, Khamsun, salawatin, that is five daily prayers. Katabahun Allahu ala ibad. Allah made them to be obligatory upon his slaves. Man atabihinna, he who brings those prayers, walam yudayya shay'an min haqqihinna, and he does not waste any of their rights. Qal, then this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will put him in paradise. كَانَ عَهْدًا عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُدْخِلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will have a covenant with him that he will put him in paradise. And then he said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَأْتِي بِهِنْ And if he does not come with these prayers, then he's got no covenant with Allah the Almighty. If he had come to Allah Azza wa Jalla of resurrection, إِنْ شَاءَ عَذَّبَ وَإِنْ شَاءَ غَفَرَ الله. He might punish him or he might forgive him. So he has got no word with Allah Azza wa Jalla that will make him to enter paradise. This prayer, it is actually the Amud of Deen. It is the pillar of Islam. And it's very important to know that. And it's also Awwarul Ibadat. And we're going to discuss that inshallah after the break. One of the greatest events the greatest that ever, events took place ever took place was the birth was of the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the mercy to all mankind. His character exemplary, his honesty impeccable, his kindness unparalleled. The Prophet Sallallahu ethics and morals were the Quran. Comprehend how he transformed the world then and for all time to come with his outstanding teachings and behavior. We have to study the seerah so that we can inform others, the non-Muslims, about this About great this man. Great. Behold Sheikh Asim Al Hakim uncover the everlasting impact of the message and ways of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in mercy for mankind. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3:30 a.m. India on Peace TV. <laughs> Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Narrated, Abu Musa, may Allah be pleased with him. Some people asked Allah's messenger, may peace be upon him. Whose Islam is the best? That is, who is a very good Muslim? He replied, one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith Number 11. With skill and strategy. Defend Islam. With patience and positivity. Protect yourselves from doubts. With hope and humility. To have belief that Al-Islam is the only correct religion the only truth. Learn the techniques that help in facing emerging challenges to Islam. Join Hatham Al Haddad in The Art of Defending Islam next on Peace TV. Subhanallah. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before the break, we were talking about the second counseling of the Prophet of Allah to Abu Darda, which is talking about the prayer. The prayer, if the person observes his prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incumbent upon him. He made it incumbent upon himself that he will make you to enter paradise. If you do not do the prayer out of laziness, of course, then you are in the 
will of Allah Azza wa Either he will forgive you, either he will put you in the hellfire. As for the person when he observes his prayer, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ In Surah Al-Mu'minun, that is, they are observing their prayer. How do they observe and keep their prayer? By observing their wudu, by coming to the jama'ah, by making tumaneen and tranquility in the prayer, by having submissiveness, by praying the prayer on time, by praying it at the beginning of its time, all of that is to do with observing your prayer. Ula'ika humul warithun. Those are the ones who are going to be inheritors. Inheriting what? Alladhina yarithun al firdausa hum fiha khalidu. The ones who will inherit the firdaus, the highest, the ultimate in Jannah. Also, we say to the people who are not doing the prayer on time, they are under the threat, woe, for wailu lil musalleen. Woe to the people who pray. Alladhina hum an salatihim sahoon. The ones who do not pray, they are oblivious. They do not pray prayer properly. They do not pray on time. They miss some of the prayers. The ones who are showing off. So, if you have wasted your prayer, some of that, you are under the threat. If you have lost all the prayer, you do not pray at all, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is threatening you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al Muddathir, verse 38, All the souls are attached to what they have earned. That is, except those who are in the right. They are in paradise. Ask him. They're asking those people on the hellfire. What made you to go into the hellfire? They said to them, they were not from among those people who used to pray. So those who were in the fire, they were asked by the people in paradise, why did you go to hellfire? They would say, because we were not observing our prayer. We do not pray. The third counseling, وَلَا تَشْرَبَنَّ الْخَمْرَ فَإِنَّهَا مِفْتَاحُ كُلِّ شَرْ And do not consume khamr. Khamr means wine and it means alcohol, which is because khamr, the wine, is being haram because of the alcohol in it. And do not consume khamr, for verily it is the key for every evil. And we tell you, verily, it has been proved that the khamr, the alcohol, is the mother of all filth, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said. Well, if the khamr is the mother of the old filth, then the alcohol is the mother of the mother, so the grandmother of the old filth. And if the person drinks alcohol, usually it is the case he would do things which are a'udhu billah. He might fornicate with his sister and his mother because he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, riyadhu billah. Because it goes to the brain and this person doesn't know what he's doing. For example, we see that the people when they drink alcohol, they become inhuman. They're not, not human anymore. They might even fornicate with animals. Well, they don't know what they're doing. And we have a story for that. Story number one, story that Uthman narrated about a righteous person. He said that there was a woman who is beautiful and she was a person who is, you know, fornicator. And she wanted a man for herself. So she asked him to be a witness. So he responded. As soon as he came inside, she made sure that her servant, the boy, would lock up everything. He can't go out. As soon as he was inside, she said to him, well, you've got one of the three choices. Either to fornicate with me because I didn't want you to come as a witness. I wanted you for myself. Either you make zina with me, or you kill the boy, or you drink that bottle of wine. Now the man thought of it. He said maybe this is the easiest one, the less evil one, according to what he thinks, is to drink from the wine. So she gave him one glass. So she said, I'm going to drink from the wine. She gave him one glass. He drank. Give him another one. He drank. And after he was really completely off, he fornicated with her, and then as all well, he'd been commanded to kill the boy, and he killed the boy. And that is why we say that the person, when he drinks alcohol, definitely he doesn't know what he's saying. And definitely it is the mother of all filth. As for the second story, which I've heard from our Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi, may Allah have mercy upon him, which is a true story that took place in one of the countries, that one person, he drank so much, and he came to the house. He doesn't know what he's saying, what he's doing. So he said to his mother, I want to do it with you. And his mother, she said, fear Allah, what are you saying? Wake up, my dear son. I'm not my mother, I'm going to give me something, I want to fornicate with you. So she said, I can't let you. It's not really allowed. 
So Gon brings a gun where he knows where it is, puts it in his head. He said, if you don't allow me, I'm going to kill myself. So the mother, because she loves him so much, she doesn't want to kill himself. She offered herself for him. And he did the fahisha. On the following day, he woke up. And usually it is the case, the person who's drunk, they say that, you know, he remembers something, what he's done. So he felt there's something wrong. So he went to his mother and asked, what did I do last night? She said, well, you came drunk and, you know, probably you just slept. He said, no, no, I've done something. No, no, he didn't do anything. He brought the gun again and he put it in his head. He said, if you don't tell me what I've done last night, I would kill myself. He said, well, she now because she's scared that he's going to kill himself. So she told him the truth. As soon as he knew what he has done, he killed himself. And that is why we say the alcohol is the grandmother of all filth. Be careful. And wallahi, we have seen so many people doing worse even than this when they drink alcohol. We have seen people, wal'iyadu billah, turning into even worse than animal, wal'iyadu billah. So avoid the alcohol. The alcohol and the kham, the, the iman, they don't go with each other. If the khamr is there, the iman is out. If the iman is there, the khamr is out. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, innam al-khamru wal-maysir. O you who believe, verily, khamr, that is wine, which is alcohol, wal-maysir, gambling, wal-ansabu wal-azlamu rijsum min amri shaitan. All of that is to be from the deeds of the shaitan. Fajtanibuh, avoid it, la'allakum tuflihun. Innama yuridu shaitanu an yuqi'a baynakum al-adawata wal-baghda. Verily the shaitan, wants to put enmity and hatred between you as Muslims and believers. Why? Through the khamr, fil khamri wal maysir. From the khamr and the maysir. He wants to stop you from the remembrance of Allah. He wants to stop you from the remembrance of Allah. To stop you from as well the salah. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Are you going to stop? Will you stop? Amr Khattab as soon as he heard said, انتهينا, انتهينا. Definitely. Will you not stop? He said, yes, we will stop and will abstain from drinking. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, he had warned us against the alcohol. He said, he was amongst you, he was capable not to let anything that goes into his stomach, except for halal. For verily, first thing would stink when you die is your stomach. So make sure that whatever is in your stomach is halal. Otherwise, it will bring a very horrible odor. And also we find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al khamru ummul khabath. The wine is the mother of all khabath, all evil deeds. Man sharibiha, that he who does drink it, lam tuqbal salatuhu arba'ina yawma. His prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. And if he dies while the khamr is in his stomach, faqad mata mitatan jahiliya. He will die in a way which is the pre-Islamic people, the paganism used to die. And also, the person who is drinking alcohol, the one who consumes alcohol, is addicted to it. So if he's addicted to it, he's like a worship of an idol. You know, the worship of an idol can let go of the idol. He's all the time worshipping it. Same thing with this addicted person of the alcoholic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had given a covenant. For the one who drinks the whatever is, intoxicates you, that Allah Azza wa will make you to drink tatinat al-khabal. The mud, which is the extract of the flesh which is being melted into the hellfire from the people. All this pus and this flesh, you know, goes into like a juice and you will be drinking that. And this is the sweat of the people of the fire. The fourth counseling now, which is very important, wa walidayk. That is, obey your parents. Wa in amaraka, if they command you, and to leave your worldly possession, then give them your worldly possession. It is very important to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah had ordained that you should worship Him alone, and then He said, and also to be kind, dutiful to your parents. Look at that. After Allah is the parents. In the ahadith, after Allah, parents. It's very important. So, if they have taken your money, it says in the hadith, then you have to give it to them. Now the hadith, we mentioned in another narration, this is this hadith, a different hadith, that your money is for them whenever they need them. If they don't need them, then they should not ask for the money. So if they're not in need of the money, they can't take the money from you just like that. But you yourself, and you and yourself, and your money is for your father, if they are in need of it. 
So they are in need of it. They could take. لِلْأَبِي أَنْ يَمُدَّهُ فِي مَا لِوَلَدِهِ كَمَشَاءٍ Meaning that the father can put his hand in the money, in the wealth of his father.